kids it seemed kind of random and they would just do certain testing and reading and stuff like that it's just kind of a cool system right the problem with this program is look at this civil war footage and tell me what's wrong with it but have you been to the osirian because from the top down it looks a whole lot like a really basic computer processor we have living computer chips ufos spotted in new york city and creepy dolls that come to life in today's video we're going to be reacting to clips i found on the internet that'll have you questioning everything let's get into it new nightmare unlocked after seeing this video posted on reddit if you needed another reason not to have a ceiling fan with a light on it in your bathroom then here it is Uh, I would burn my house down. And you know if there's one, there's more. First of all, I've never seen a ceiling fan in a bathroom before. That's a new one to me. And regardless of it being a ceiling fan, if I seen a scorpion in the light fixture, period, it's just going to be the end of the game. Now, how does that even happen? So as you know, y'all, Hurricane Debbie just left New York just the other day. And the day of, this was spotted in the skies of New York. Check this out. There's a UFO in New York City, y'all. Yo, it's a, it's a UFO. Oh, shit. Did y'all see that? Y'all see that beam? Check this out, y'all. Look at that. Did y'all see that? What is that? Look at that. It's flashing. And could that be like the beam to pull things in? And again, y'all, please don't dismiss this as Project Blue Beam because that's exactly what they want us to believe. Because a lot of you guys believe that you have ancestors in the stars in a lot of these spaceships. And when they come, you really going to think it's Project Blue Beam. Because we live in these interesting times where we were never privy to these type of situations before. We've never seen things like that. Because the government would always get sent these type of videos and they would always sweep it underneath the rug. like nothing. I don't know what that could be in the sky. It, it kind of looks like plane lights, but it's too consistent. It's not. It doesn't look like it's flashing so if anyone has any information on what that is let me know in the comments there have been some haunting new developments with the brain organoids the tiny human brains that we can grow from stem cells and make to run a computer what you see behind me are the brain organoids working in real time this was from the company that put them on computer chips that is 16 human brain organoids to a chip and sold them as a subscription yes you can pay an exorbitant price to use them and have them do your computation, but is the name Final Spark not just haunting all on its own? One of the things that I had not considered is that they will develop around the task you tell them to do and they'll get better at it over time because they are living. Their neurons work just like yours because they are human neurons. Final Spark, their idea is that these use like a thousand times less energy than a standard computer chip. They are better at doing some things, like learning to play Pong, for example, because we have immersed them in what seems to be the literal matrix. But they're going to get better at the task at hand, and you can watch them do that. You can watch their brainwaves in real time as they do it. One of the things that really worries me is that we don't know what their capabilities are. We don't know what they can become as we grow them for longer and more complex and as we put them in robots. It's only a matter of time before they strap those things to AI technology to help advance them even further. I want to say it's impressive and amazing, but it's kind of scary all at the same time and it feels kind of wrong. Let me know what you guys think of this. Y'all, this is literally insane. There is a YouTuber named Normie and he's been on the internet streaming for 10 days straight without sleep. He's trying to beat the world record at 265 hours. Now this is bringing up a whole bunch of opinions of people telling his friend how much of a bad person he is because we're going to go over how dangerous not sleeping is. But YouTube actually took his live down so now he's on kick. He's close but this could have irreparable damage done to him. Sorry he's been doing it for 11 days so Norman posted 11 days ago world record attempt number 3 today and a dinosaur. And this is him right here. He probably doesn't know any better. He seems to be a young kid. His friend, at the Nuxter on Twitter, is getting eaten up by the comments saying he's not capable. Stop this right now. You better hurry up and call a paramedic. Or right beside me, you're a sick person. So I'm not actually going to play the live so you can see it so this video can stay up. But I'll tell you this. His friend is literally instigating him staying up. Every time Norm falls down to fall asleep, he says, get up, get up. Then again, I'm sure he instructed his friends not to let him fall asleep under any circumstances. But then again, we need common sense. I asked Google, which ended up asking AI, how much time do we have to go without sleep to pass away? And it said it's unknown, and that the record was just over 10 days. Remember, he's really close to beating that record. 
but there was an experiment in 1965 that wanted to see the effects of no sleep, and there's also other nefarious, supposedly, allegedly experiments. So here's an article that tells you what's going to happen after three days of no sleep. Hallucinations, paranoia, uh, psychosis. Also, past three days, are likely to have many micro-sleeps. As he's standing up, he's probably sleeping for fractions of a minute. But here's the dangerous part. Eventually, after three days, at some point, your brain will begin to stop functioning properly, which can lead to organ failure and, in rare cases, unalive. Now, remember, if your brain stops working, you can forget to breathe, your heart can forget to pump anything. I know this from experience. Not me, my son. So I hope the Nookster will stop before we have some real-life zombies being brewed up in this dude's house. It's really crazy to see kids out here doing this kind of stuff because if this person's doing it, other people are going to follow along. And I wouldn't say that his friend is a bad friend for helping him out. They, they just both probably do not know any better. And one friend is just telling him, hey, don't let me fall asleep. And the other friend's just trying his best to do what his friend asks. So I, I wouldn't say that it's a bad friend for this. Just probably a very uneducated one. Mermaids are real. I told you a few days ago, I'm back to prove it. We'll come right back to that video of that mermaid that you just saw. So we have no doubt had mermaids all throughout our history. But remember when the fallen angels came down and made it with the women? And they were genetic hybrids all over the earth? So much to the point that God flooded it? Look at this right behind me. Why are these people wearing fish suits? You too? It's because it's Dagon, a fish mermaid god. And they would all wear fishes out for for the god. That really existed. Think Little Mermaid. Now, here's Dagon, the fish god, and there's the Vatican hat. Guess what? Same thing. And deep into Egyptian lore, it talks about the fish people coming out of the water and beating the Egyptians in a battle. Now, there's many kinds of mermaids. You know they're all documented? See its head? See its head? Dagon? Fish people. Exactly like this weird creature that popped up on the internet swimming through the ocean. And now back to this weird freaking thing. Take a good look at it. Can you spot it? There you go. Mermaids were real, and they are real because they won't die in a flood. I don't know. I feel like that creature at the very end of the video is not a real creature. That's got to be some kind of movie prop or something. If it's real, let me know in the comments because I've never seen anything like that before. And I do wish that we lived in a world where there were mermaids actively swimming around in the ocean. I think that would be really cool. And I'm not talking about just, oh, I think I see a mermaid. Like, no, we know that there is a society of mermaids down there that we can visit if we wanted to and even talk to. That would be awesome, but kind of scary because you know that they could mess you up if you got to their territory. Well, let me know what you guys think of this. Do you think that that creature is real at the end of the video? Do you believe in mermaids? Let me know in the comments. I see a lot of people here on the comments of this video saying that the Book of Enoch talks about mermaids all the time. So let me know if that's also true. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. Advanced ancient civilizations, where are they? If advanced societies like the Anunnaki or Atlantis really did exist 30,000, hundreds of thousands of years ago, where's the proof? The debunkers have been asking this for decades and we finally have the answer. Think about the Fermi paradox. If there really are billions of planets in our galaxy, the chances of life should be fairly high. So why haven't we found any signs of alien life yet? Or I don't know, maybe we did. Historians, career archaeologists, professors, and Google debunkers claimed that the earliest civilization in history were the Sumerians around four to five thousand BC and when I say civilization I mean like full-blown societies you know towns farming pottery housing some form of governing body not just humans which have been around for much longer we have the ancient myths of our past which frequently talk of previous societies of advanced even godlike beings like the Anunnaki or Atlantis but the burning question on every debunkers mind where the f is the direct not speculative evidence of these long-lost advanced civilizations because our history textbooks and common archaeology claims there's none this is what I call the reset paradox if civilization really has existed for hundreds of thousands of years only to get reset and start all over again where's all the proof from this colossal timeline surely hundreds of thousands of years of existence must have left behind countless evidence so here are my top theories as to why mainstream history hasn't found any yet theory one the 
dismissal, there actually is direct evidence of advanced super ancient civilizations as we see in out of place artifacts like the 400 million year old London Hammer, or even the more recent Antikythera device which was way ahead of its time to make any sense. But we either dismiss them as hoaxes, claim mistakes in dating techniques, or slap some sort of description onto them that fits into our current timeline because anything else wouldn't make sense in the mainstream narrative. That's what you call confirmation bias. Theory 2. Time. It's been too f long. Maybe the reason we only have evidence of defined civilized culture going back six, seven thousand years is because everything else before then has eroded into nothingness. Even aluminum would fully decompose within 500 years, let alone the tens or hundreds of thousands that would reduce it to an unrecognizable dust. Well, what about materials like glass that can take millions of years to decompose? Maybe these ancient civs never invented glass or plastics, which doesn't mean they were less advanced than us, but perhaps they followed a different evolutionary trajectory than us that didn't include the use of oils, plastics, and glass the way we do today. They could have had different materials that were superior to our own and were in some way more homogenous with the earth, which leads us to theory three, biodegradable technology. Imagine that whatever methods and materials these advanced ancients used to achieve technological superiority were completely organic and biodegradable, like the biblical manna that would fully decompose into the earth way before our modern society was able to find any evidence of it. Might seem laughable or borderline impossible for us to even consider a possibility, much the same way the concept of an iPhone could have been to them back then. Impossible in one civilization could be reality in another. Theory 4. Imperfect dating techniques. Reminder that the technique we use to find out how old something is, radiocarbon dating, only works on things with carbon in them, like bones or wood. Everything else, like stone, is an educated guess at best. What if these guesses are way off, and the carbon-based materials found in and around our ancient sites are not accurate measures of the site's age? But rather of a time that these sites were re-inhabited after being built much, much longer ago. Theory 5, aggressive flooding. You know those global floods that almost every culture of our past talks about to some extent in their ancient myths? Well, what if they actually happened, and the flooding was so widespread and intense that it washed away every bit of evidence of these civilizations into the deepest parts of our oceans, leaving behind only our famous ancient structures like the pyramids which were too big to get washed away. I'll admit, this one's a bit of a stretch. The chances of washing away every single bit of evidence of a potentially worldwide civilization is a long shot. But combined with all the other theories, it's worth mentioning. Now, before the debunkers start crying again, we have Theory 6. They're just myths. The stories of our ancient pasts are all just made up myths and none of it actually happened. No advanced, super ancient civilizations ever existed. That's a possibility. Theory 7. There's been an intentional cover-up. Just a theory, may or may not be true, totally satire, entertainment purposes only. My lawyers told me to say that. Perhaps an elite group of the ultra-powerful are aware of the divine knowledge of our past, like Atlantis or even the origins of our species. Knowledge that could be accessed and used by anyone on Earth that threatens their dominance, like free atmospheric energy or immortality. And they're purposely doing everything they can to cover up and downplay any evidence as false. I mean, they definitely have the money to do something like this, so they could pull it off if they tried. Publishing dozens of official news pieces for the media companies which they own, writing up a couple fact check articles on websites that they also own, and finally influencing the big tech companies which they are the top shareholders of to direct traffic only to sources they want the world to see. Everything else they don't approve of is just a nonsense crackpot theory that is dismissed by the highly educated masses who did their research on Google, which seems to be what they're doing to places like Gobekli Tepe and Gunung Padang. Ancient sites that are so old they didn't fit into any of our mainstream historical timelines, so they're doing everything they can to cover them back up. I couldn't believe what I found out about these sites. Stay tuned for that. That's a lot of really good theories. I do like the reset paradox. I do have my own theory behind this. I'm wondering if maybe these ancient civilizations, if they were as advanced as people think that they were, and we just cannot find the evidence of it, who's to say maybe they were so advanced that when something catastrophic was going to happen, some huge, huge event, like a major flood, they had the technology that was advanced enough that they could basically jump their whole society, their whole world, if you will. They see a massive flood coming. All right, let's put in the coordinates and we're going to go to this alternate reality where there's no flood that's going to occur. That would make a lot more sense to me as to why we cannot find a lot of ancient technology, why we cannot find all of these old 
civilizations that basically just disappeared. They just had advanced technology that allowed them to jump from one reality to the next. So the next calamity that's going to happen, they can jump to the next reality. And that might happen again for us. Let me know what you guys think of this theory. I, I think it's a pretty fun one. Speaking of monkeys, and Andrew's reel from last episode with the head transplanting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. In the oh. 1970s, a doctor removed the head from a chimpanzee, replaced it with another one. It opened its eyes and it could... It was fully conscious. But it couldn't move its body. Um, but then it died a few days later. Yeah. But that was in the 70s. Yeah. And dude, that I, exists. Think about that for a second. You go to sleep. You wake up. That's not your body. Like It sounds like a Black Mirror episode. So, dude. Yeah. Are they going to do that with humans? If you want to go oh. super dark, there's no way they're not farming bodies, too. <laughs> That's what Joe Rogan thinks the scariest conspiracy is that we're just a farm. What? Yeah, like an alien, alien farm. farm. But now it's the government doing it to us. If we were a body farm, why would they let us get old? Wouldn't they want us like in, like, you're, you look at you guys. You guys are in prime condition. Why wouldn't they just come get you right now? Let me correct you. I've never peaked as far as my body. I'm still <laughs> on the incline. So mm. I know it doesn't seem like it can get much better than this. It's sensational. I think we need to start re writing Old MacDonald Had a Body Farm. Yeah. Old MacDonald Had a Body Farm. And he's from outer space. It would not surprise me at all if these kind of experiments have been happening a lot further than the 70s. And as far as the body farming goes, they'll probably just start cloning bodies, bodies without heads. They'll probably develop bodies specifically to be made to look a certain type of way for whoever wants these head transplants. And like I said the last time we've seen this type of video... I'm for this if it's to help people in need, but the problem is, is there's going to be way too many wealthy people that take this over and continuously dominate our world and just let us fall behind because you know a surgery like this is going to be expensive. Have you ever heard of the GATE program? No. The program that was started way long ago back in the 80s. It was this program that was put into schools and schools would pick out certain kids. It seemed kind of random and they would just do certain testing and reading and stuff like that. It's just kind of a cool system, right? The problem with this program is that they are funded and created by the CIA. They would bring these kids into a windowless room, sit these kids down, and they would test them being blindfolded in these tests as well, trying to move things. They would take field trips with the gate program no, 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 no. outside of the school. In one instance, they took kids into a museum, into a room where there was a mummy. What? And they had them stay overnight with no parental supervision. What? All this strange things. And it just doesn't make sense. And for the CIA to be involved, you know there has to be something malicious. Yeah. These are children. These are impressionable children that could be manipulated. But it's a fascinating thing because there's so much conspiracy around it. That's so weird. If my kid had to go through any of these type of programs, I would have a lot of questions on this. And there's no way that I would let my kid go on a field trip to stay the night at a museum unsupervised or really to stay the night anywhere in general. Have any of you went through the gate program? If you have, let me know what the experience was like or do you even remember it? When you wake up, to the lies of the world and realize that everything's a lie, it causes you to question things, even like water spouts. Yeah, I captured my very first water spout today since moving to the Florida area. And while it might not be as dramatic as that first one I showed, it was something out of a sci-fi book. And when you look deeper into what's been found around these water spouts, it should cause you to question what they actually are as well, because there is loads of evidence loads of evidence that when these water spouts are formed, oftentimes UFOs are spotted around them. Especially in 1994, when over 300 people saw UFOs over Lake Michigan sucking water up into them. And when you find evidence of these spouts not over water, but literally seeming to have something being pulled up into it, something that looks very much like some sort of entity or body even, then it should really cause you to question the narrative of what these actually are. Because for me now, I question everything, especially everything the mainstream tells us. And well, the mainstream tells us this is just a weather phenomenon. But to me, there's just too much evidence that there have been unidentified flying objects found around these spouts several times. And when you find evidence of just how easy it is to cloak a person with simple mirror tricks, then you really need to ask yourself, if a simple mirror trick can cause cloaking down here, how easy would it be to cloak some unidentified flying objects in the sky? 
Now, I'm not saying that these are UFOs from other planets and galaxies. I think there's something much different. Potentially government crafts, or even potentially ancient angel technology, because I don't believe in aliens, as they tell us, that is. The one thing I know for certain, though, 100%, without a doubt, is that you should always question the narrative, because blindly believing things that you're told is what leads to the problem that we're in right now, where 90% of the population thinks they live on a spinning globe in an infinite universe created by a big bang and evolved from monkeys. Of course, it's all for entertainment purposes. I know this is a weather phenomenon that happens just when there's UFOs around. Entertainment only, of course. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the best fittest flat earther videos I've seen. And when it comes to water spouts, I have to say, they are extremely amazing looking. They almost don't even look real. And I could only imagine people back in the day, like ancient times, if they ever seen anything like this, they would have to think that this was like a god or something taking water up into the sky. And I mean, I personally still think it is an alien spaceship that's sucking water into it, just harvesting all the salt water or water in general. It just looks so otherworldly. Have any of you ever seen a water spout like that? I have never seen one that clearly. Ancient India rewrites history yet again. Thousand year old caves have just been inspected by stonemasons and engineers and what they found is going to freak you out. These are the Barbar bar Caves. There's five of them. Carved into solid granite, the polish is so smooth, it's smoother than machine polished marble and slightly less than industrial glass and 20 times smoother than industrial granite. Professional stonemasons were interviewed about recreating this project and how difficult it would be out of 10, and those are their answers. Most said it was impossible. A company called AGP, started by a former stonemason, scanned him with one of these. It's a spinning laser that creates millions of data points that can reconstruct the caves from the inside out with no distortion. Here are the results. The caves have perfect symmetry in the floor, ceiling, and walls. The walls are angled by just a few degrees. Why? Polishing with the aid of gravity is more than doable. That's what we do. Polishing a vertical wall and a curved ceiling, on the other hand, is... The walls have a perfect angle within 0.1 degrees. You can't even tell with your eyes. Why was this necessary? The acoustics of these caves are also ridiculous. Granite barely absorbs acoustic waves, and the dome at Sudama resonates at 74.9 hertz. This renders speech unintelligible in the chamber. Reverb is the time it takes a sound to decay into nothing. 60 seconds is the max my production software will go. Inside Notre Dame, it'll reverb for about 10 seconds. Sudama 62. Vapika is 70. When they were studying the acoustics, they discovered that the angled walls reduced the floating echo. The caves were rediscovered in 1785 by the colonizer dudes. No function of the caves has ever been discovered. The historical foundation is based on this crude hack job into the perfect walls. It says the absolutely perfect caves were used as a rain shelter. We can all agree that there was a lot of highly trained craftsmen that were needed to complete this. Yet we see nothing this precise anywhere else in India. How were they trained? How did they carve it with no electricity? Torches would suffocate workers if they didn't get silicosis. That's an incurable disease from inhaling rocks. Didn't seem like a concern. The only things we can compare it to are Nakshi Rostam, the Lycian rock tombs, Petra, and maybe a couple other sites like Kailasa. Kailasa was carved out of a single rock in traditional Indian style decorated head to toe. This has no decoration and emphasizes the precision. The Rig Veda puts a heavy emphasis on sound. So what were they used for? The clues are in geometry. If you want more clues, check out the documentary this whole video is based on. It's on YouTube and narrated by the lovely Johanna James. I would just love to know how they did that stuff back in the day. Did they have certain type of technology? Did they just use stone tools? Like, what did they use to do that? I just, I'm, I'm very amazed that that kind of stuff exists and it's supposed to be as old as it is. I would hope to one day actually get to see some of that stuff with my own eyes. Because I would actually like to appreciate that in person. Alright, so check it out. I'm sitting here going through fucking film. Like, old ass fucking, like, like real film. Dude, look at this Civil War footage and tell me what's wrong with it. Look at the multiple people in the background that are definitely like fucking 15 feet tall. Yeah. 
I don't know about that one. Those just look like regular people standing on top of some kind of ledge of some sort. I don't scare easily, but what the f- This OP is an antique collector, and he keeps them in the basement level of the storage unit. Everything seems to be going fine and dandy for a while until he finds this nightmare-inducing creature at a swap meet. He was already feeling uneasy about the thing, but any reservations he may have had were confirmed when he got contacted by the owners of this storage facility. They informed him that they were hearing a lot of strange and unusual noises coming from his unit. Scratching, bangings, the whole nine yards. But he didn't know what to tell them because, you know, he wasn't there and he had no idea. That being the case, he decided to set up a video camera inside his storage unit and this is what he caught. Hey, I love the movie Toy Story, but I don't think I would like it if my toys were alive, because that would just be terrifying. For anyone that's lost friends, family, or loved ones, or just people that you know that were on this plane, I'm so sorry for your loss, because that was a horrible incident, and right now it is all over the internet. So my condolences to everyone out there that has to deal with this in some way. Have you ever noticed that the voice in your head isn't you? If you so, if you repeat the word hello now five times, so in my head, in your head, yeah, okay, and yeah. everybody listening and watching, just repeat the word yeah. hello five times. Okay. Could you hear that? I could hear it, yeah, okay. in my head. So if you could hear that, then that voice cannot be you. It is your voice. Mm. It belongs to you. But it's not you. And if it's not me, yeah. then does that mean... That, that gives me power to ignore it? Exactly. Or to tell it it's wrong? Power to ignore it, mostly. Um, I've come to distrust it, to be honest by paying very close attention to like the voice in my head has told me to do something i've done it it didn't work out mm. that's happened multiple times what happens if i just ignore it completely and just go about life without listening to it what happens well i'll tell you one thing that does happen you don't suffer so much along the way even if the outcomes are the same you got there without suffering because you weren't listening to what was going on in there and I think people with ADHD have a unique ability to grasp what I just said because their voice is so strong. In I mean, I can't really speak for the people with ADHD, but I really do enjoy the voice inside my head. Though that thing can talk a lot, I do feel like it is a very useful piece of my body. And to me, I think it's okay to listen to the voice. You do have that decision to either second guess or to judge what you're thinking. And sometimes even if you do what your voice was telling you to do and it didn't turn out well, you learn from it. That's how you know not to do it that way again. It's because it's experience, right? My voice in my head runs a million miles an hour. It talks about everything all at once. And it's hard to pick apart what I want to pick from that. But I don't think it's something that leads me in the wrong direction. Now, have I made some mistakes by listening to my voice in the head? Yes, but I've learned from them, and then the voice in my head's like, oh, well, we should do this a little differently because it didn't work out that way the last time we did it. To me, the little bit of suffering or the little bit of hardship that comes with thinking and doing what your thoughts are saying to do isn't so bad as long as it's not like something really crazy, you know? I just think that you learn from it and then your brain goes back and says, oh yeah, well we learn from that, we'll do it differently next time. I personally think that the voice in my head is my own, it is me speaking to myself. It just seems like a third person perspective when my voice in my head speaks. It's a really complicated topic to talk about, but let me know in the comments what you guys think about this or how your brain works. Do you listen to the voice in your head? Do you try to ignore the voice in your head? To me, I do like to listen to the voice in my head. I'm fully convinced. We're stealing all of our tech from ancient temples. I know what you're thinking. 
That's just one example. No, it's not. That's a different tipple, different ceiling. Okay, turbines are really complex. They got a lot of moving parts. Yeah, and they put those in there too. They're on the pillars. Speaking of pillars, you ever seen these? These are ionic pillars. Ionic pillars. I'm on to, I caught you. I'm on to you. I got you. Okay, okay. Parabolic antenna. It's a fancy word for satellite TV dish. Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, y'all have been to Karnak, I know. But have you been to the Osirian? Because from the top down, it looks a whole lot like a really basic computer processor. Probably just took a quick drive over to Promenon and upgraded the hardware, huh? Where are you going to plug that in? Ancient city in China? Right there, maybe? Feeling a little bit more Middle Eastern? Maybe Persepolis? High frequency oscillator. You mean anchor watt? Yeah, cat's out of the bag, buddy. Micro resonator. You mean Tamil Temple? Ah, I didn't forget about the circuit diagram. Yeah, you didn't reverse engineer an acoustic masterpiece. Plasma confinement. Well, that's a quick little upgrade if you just go to Dendera. Then you got a cathode ray tube. Old tube TV. Quantum computer. I need to see the sky miles, especially from the guys at CERN. Y'all think you're just so smart, huh? The aerial shots that look like circuitry board kind of makes me wonder if what if the Earth was used as a massive circuit to connect to other planets or to connect the planet to itself a little bit more efficiently. That's a really fun theory that I often think about. Like if there is a place in Egypt that can connect to a place in Mexico for them to communicate with each other, they might have to construct their whole society in this formation that actually actually allows them to do so. Just like how we have to have circuit boards, motherboards, and computer chips to be designed a certain way to allow enough energy to bounce back and forth to each piece to read its data. I like that theory a lot. Let me know what you guys think of that one. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end today's video. As always, if you found any of the clips enjoyable, Links are in the description down below. And as you can tell, I am back into the office, so hopefully I can get videos like this out regularly again, so it won't be such a drought. Because I've been slacking on these past few days of not uploading videos, but everything seems to be good now. Hurricane Debbie has passed, so when the next hurricane comes, I might have to move everything back into the house, but better safe than sorry. And with that being said, have a good day.